I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, here we are again for The Truth Hurts, episode seven, can you believe it or not? And, uh, well, Big Red or Bluey or Donald Trump or Oompa Loompa or any of those uh, names that you want to call uh, Tony Sheehan. Tony, good to see you. You look pretty good today. Well, I look a lot for a better. Monday morning, good to be back on a Monday. It well, is it great Tuesday, to be back on a month. Yes, well, obviously we had the Easter Bunny up here last week, Wayne, so you were looking after the kids and the chocolate rounds. So, tell, tell me this. I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. Everyone knows if you uh, have been living in Melbourne, Melbourne's had just about the best weather in Australia. <laughs> in, the no, last, in the last two months, yeah. the weather has been unbelievable here. Yes, I know you've been back and forth, and you're a bit of a uh, you know a bit, bit of a, a travelling Wilbury, and you get around here and there. But it has been amazing, and I walk in here today, and it's a beautiful morning in Melbourne, and you've got an umbrella with you again. Yes, well, you walk around like you're the penguin off Batman. Wayne, same build, Wayne. You same, know, same build <laughs> as the penguin. What are you? What is, is it? Because you want to be trendy, is a little it, bit of both. Are you s- people in Sydney use umbrellas as a little bit of a fashion statement? What tosser walks around with well, an umbrella when it's a beautiful day outside? Let me uh, make a comparison. If you thought it was cold outside, you might take a jumper with you. Mm. If I think it's going to rain, I'll take an umbrella. And then these days in Melbourne, because the rain is constant. Oh, this is a great topic. What what percentage when you? You know, look into your, uh, your My app, iPhone, yeah. Your app and, you know, you look at the weather. What percentage does it have to be for you to carry an umbrella around? Oh, anywhere above 30, I reckon. But look, if we are going to rely on the iPhone, you wouldn't know whether you're wearing shorts or a duffel coat. You, that is unbelievable. I don't know anyone that just carries an umbrella around for the sake of it. Well, anyway. Is it a Sydney thing? Uh, are, you well, bringing, are you trying to bring a trend down to Melbourne? Yes, I am. Well, because now that I'm back living in Melbourne, I thought, well, I may as well acclimatise and walk around with an umbrella. Oh. And if you walk around in a nice blue suit, thanks to the boys at Rochford in Sydney, and if you carry an umbrella, a lot of people look at the branding you, of the umbrella. If you were going to be that big a toss, yeah. go back to Sydney. Well, maybe I should. Because yeah. you, you don't walk around with an umbrella. Now, for all it starts of, raining, get your umbrella and put it out if you have to. I know why you probably, yeah. Anyway, go on. Hey, Wayne. Now, what yeah. about? Hang on. What? What's something wrong with the hair? No, well, is, that, is, that, is it because you don't want to get your hair wet? Is well, that pretty much? Yeah. <laughs> I've got hundred dollar shampoo. I've got thirty dollar wax. So you. I don't want to so not it. even a. You, you know, if you haven't got your umbrella, you you know, just a little oh, bit scared get, to get a little bit of rain between the car and the little bit wherever of, you're going. Yeah, into. a little bit of paranoia. I've got to work out which. Shops to run into. Hey, now, by the way, we were talking about AFL runners a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Uh, you're not going back and working for Arden Street, are you? you got your Rubeoy oh. T-shirt on, which looks like it's one of your kids. <laughs> What's going on? Or has Nike decided to reach out to like, you? Do you like the... Uh, I've always been with Nike. Do you like this colour? The colour? What, did you grab your bicep? The colour's, you like the the colour's colour. grandiose and outlandish. Well, I went to the gym first, so that's why... I've got this colour. So you're not running to... for the ruse this year? Clarko hasn't no. called you? I told you. Good players shouldn't run. So <laughs> <laughs> fair to say hey, I won't be now, running. Now talk about yes, good let's weather. let's move on. Good weather. Good weather. We've been in Adelaide. And a big show. And I know we've mentioned this leading up to the gather round, but we we're, were actually amongst the gather round for the first few days. I tell and you, were we what? They, they, it is an unbelievable event. And I know there's talk, Tassie coming into the comp, maybe – Tasmania could be a state that, you know, took on gather what, round. No. There is, there's even talk that there could be multiple gather rounds in one year. See, I that's, did, I did I th- see that. And, but I think that's stupid. As you say, opinion. that's rhubarb. It is rhubarb. There's, if you look at all the other states, Perth, okay, Perth, you could do it over there, I think. In mm, saying that, yeah. though, in saying that, it's too far away. It is. And given the prices that people were paying for flights to get to Adelaide and everything else yep. and the amount of people that drove, they're not driving from Melbourne to Perth. Closer to Bali. So it's too far too far away to have it in Perth. Yep. Sydney's not a football state. Correct. Neither is Queensland. Yeah? Yeah. You agree I with Yeah, I do. I, I think it's just got to stay in Adelaide forever. A bit like Anzac Day, a bit like Queen's birthday, a bit like Good Friday, which North Melbourne should have forever. And I know yes. there's been some debate around that, but they've – they're set in concrete and gather round should forever remain in Adelaide and let them build on this. And I'll tell you what, their Premier, Peter Malanowskis, 
Is that how you pronounce it? Very good it? pronunciation. Peter Malinowskis. He he is seriously an impressive man. I tell you, he was so good this weekend that five million Victorians were calling for him to come back and live here. Well, not come back, to come and live in Victoria. Is he is he born and bred South Australia? Uh, I reckon I, he must be. He, well, I think he is. His popularity over there is at about 90%. And, and he can handball too. I sat in a function where he was the speaker. Yep, that was on Friday. That was on Friday. And uh, Max Gorn was a, a speaker and Jeff Brown was there and you had, you know, a heap of different... Uh, Guest high speakers. flyers yep. and guest speakers, I, I, I and I was I was just a guest and on a table, and I sat back and listened to him speak. Articulate, smart, funny, good looking. Yep. You know, oh boy, since when have you said that about a <laughs> about a, a politician? <laughs> and Head of state. And to top it all off, after he spoke, uh, you could see the room almost wanted to stand up and giving him a standing ovation. He, mm. the whole room clapped. Everyone on my table, and there were some smart cookies on that table, and they all they all just said, um, you know, how great he was, what a great job he's doing, the way he spoke about Gather Round, he spoke yep. about the AFL, um, and how Very hard impressive. how hard they are to deal with at times, and, <laughs> and just trying to get things across the line. But just the uh, the amount that has improved this year with the, the you know more people coming, the, obviously the food and wine festival at yep. Norwood yep. yesterday, which I wasn't there for, but apparently that was huge. Uh, I mean, just everything about it was sensational. People walking around, you saw Brisbane jumpers, you saw Carlton jumpers, Collingwood, Hawthorne, yep. and it was the, the place was a buzz. It was a really good vibe. The only thing that I reckon they stuffed up over there, and it wasn't their fault, it was the AFL's fault, which is, and that was what do you reckon? The score review system. Oh. That's well. Before we go into the score review system, Duck, we've we've got to extend. I've actually got to uh, turn around and say what you just said cannot be faulted for what the South Australian government did, the AFL, the broadcasters, and the fans. It, we were only there for three days, but it was an incredible vibe. It was great city to be in. The weather was fantastic. And by and large, for the majority of the football was pretty good. You know what I do also love? When you get all of the, the football media in the one place at the one time. So you had everyone there. You had Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 10. But you had the morning shows. They're all doing – yep. they were down Your on the river. Carl. Yep. Everyone was there. So you walk around and you bump into all of these people. And like I said, there's that many lunches and functions and everything. And, you know, you, you can see that – you can see those even amongst their peers, those that, uh, you know – sort of think fairly highly of themselves and the way they walk around. <laughs> you get a name somebody? And those that are a little bit, you know, they, they go a little bit sheepish yeah. within the group. And it, it, it is amazing. And then you've got... Well, we, we ran into the Fox boys and had a couple of waters with them the other night. Yes, I, we saw Jay Montagna and we yep. saw David, David King, King and, and Daniel Scott, Harford. And mate and, and Harford. your mate from the Herald Sun. Oh, Ralph Mouth. Yeah, We ran into Johnny Ralph, which was great. And... You know what? You two broke bread. Had a had a uh, had a chat with that. No, but that that you even offered it, to buy him a beer. That was great. It was. I love I love that. And you do get to speak to some people that you wouldn't normally, or some people you might have had a beef with over time. Yes. And you, like you said, you get to break bread and you you sort of move on and have a bit of a chat and a bit of a laugh, and then you you go your separate ways. But what it did also show me that you know, like a, there are functions. Yes. And then there are functions. Yes. We're a young You're list. not going to believe this. Oh, no. We are breaking news. Two of the, two of the greats of yeah. our game. Stephen Silvani. In terms of uh, games played. Yeah. How many? There's four people. Yeah. KB. Yep. That, that have played in excess of 400. Yes. Dustin Fletcher. Yep. Boomer Harvey. Yep. Who's the other? Who's the fourth? Come on. Michael Tuck. Michael Tuck. Come on. Do you? <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, so so, yeah, so, so these four, so, so Boomer and, and Fletch had a had a so Dustin a Fletcher lunch. and Brent, Brent yeah, Harvey they had a lunch. Whereabouts? They it was by the way at the Arca Bar, which is very good, uh, very good uh, pub hotel over in Adelaide. You've got everything there. You've got the nice rooms. You've got the sports bar. Yep. You know if you're into if you're into having a punt, obviously gamble responsibly, and if you do, do it with Serge. Um, it was serious, it is, yes. it is nice restaurant. Very nice restaurant. Great pub food, also restaurant food. Food, all of the above, been renovated, so you have functions and all that there. So talk about functions. They had one booked in Friday lunch. Yes, I think it was through Mouse Promotions. 
Is that your mate from Perth? The little rodent. I wouldn't call him my mate, but he's a mate of some. Well, he's synonymous with sporty. He's little. He's he's, he's mouse. He looks like a little rodent. Yeah. <laughs> like he's he's a very different little. Uh, yes. Cat. Well, five people turned up. What to see Boomer and Fletch? actually five people. No. One Two of the greatest legends of the even, AFL. Not even one for the 100 games that they say, so the 800 between them. Boy, hey, as BT and Wayne Carey say, boy, oh boy, wow. Well, yeah, it? so that was a what, bit... What happened? That would have, I'd have got no idea. Got no idea, but that was a bit flat. So yeah. we walked through uh, after the function. Well, oh, so you were... About you were, the middle of the, when the, that function was meant to be on, and be fair to say there wasn't... So you were privy function. to this? You, you walked back from the High Flyers so function? I, yes, yes. Which had about three hundred at. Did you did you speak to uh, Brent or Dustin? Yeah, said g'day as you did. I saw what, Boomer. Were you at, one of the five? Saw Boomer at the fights. Yes, um, he was there. Which let's Corey. let's talk about a uh, little bit about the fights. That well, we, hang on, we, we, why don't we go back? Because there was a fantastic lunch the day before at the same venue. Yeah, I was which gonna, I was going to get to that. Oh, okay, you go. But we so you've got the fights which we spoke about and Kane Corns. For all those that thought that I was having a go at Kane Corns last week, by the way, for having a go at Luke Hodge and, and, and uh, Joel Selwood oh, those and comments the champions that went, viral. that went viral, I was having a go at all the nitwits out there on social media that were having a go at those the guys. social media the trolls. The social media trolls, not Kane Corns. And I know that blew up a little bit, which we'll get to, but um, my old teammate, Geez, my old teammates have had a good run this weekend. <laughs> Boom have sold five tickets and Corey's got knocked out. By the way, not laughing that he got knocked out. It's, it was a powder puff. You know, he's, he's okay. Um, he's had tests, all of that. He flew out the next day to watch Man United. In, yeah. in, he uh, flew to London within 12 hours so, of getting knocked yeah, out. Yeah, so he's... Oh, I, don't, I if, thought he was admirable in defeat. Just... What do you mean? Well, he came over to the VIP section afterwards and spent some time with us, yeah. spoke to you. That's very courageous. I wouldn't have shown my head after that effort. Well, you're a different beast than Corey. He showed more. He showed more courage coming into that area afterwards than what he did yeah, in the but fight. But that's what I mean. I admire him for actually having the tenacity. I thought it was very to come in after he'd been somewhat embarrassed. I thought that all of the guys, you know, albeit not too many of them should think about doing it again. No, I will say this: so well done, your guys like Kane Corns and Daisy Thomas and these guys who, you know what. It was all for, you know, I don't know what charity no, was involved was with it. Or charity? I don't know. I don't know whether some of the money, for whatever reasons, it takes courage to get in there. And some of them did really well. Sorry, cause it <laughs> Not so well. But a couple of those guys did really well. They kept coming forward. and Well, um, you're, you're a bit of a, uh, all perceived all to be good. a boxing aficionado. What did you think of Swanee versus Daisy? No, that's what I said. Daisy kept moving forward. He not equipped it. Shouldn't never get in again. Yep. And well, Swanee actually even surprised his own father. I spoke to Bill on Friday at that lunch. Yeah, well, oh, sorry, Thursday at that lunch, and he turned around and said, "I don't know where Dane gets his ability from." Mate, if, well, it was against Daisy Thomas. Yeah, Nothing but, against Daisy. Yes. Move no. on. It was good. By the way, no, the actual boxers that boxed on that particular night were very good. Are you talking about? No. What about um, Kane Pettifer and Mitch Robinson? Yeah, Mitch. Well, Mitch wants to take it up. He, I thought he was uh, exceptional. Yeah, he was uh, along with Kane. That was the best fight out of the uh, ex has been footballers. Yep. Uh, well, and now I know I was standing next to you after the Kane Corns Nathan Brown blew. Um, Kane came up to you. What did he say? He said g'day. And that's it. He said g'day, Duck. And I said, hey, by the way, you should you should walk around with your head held high. Yeah, he did very thought, well. Well, I he had a go. Yep, I agree. And that's all we wanted Corey to do. <laughs> Corey, Corey will, he'll accept that we did this. Then, obviously, we uh, we had the lunch on the Friday. Uh, sorry, the Thursday, the GBS lunch. Yeah, Good Bloke uh, Society. Yeah, which went really well. Tony Modra was the uh, guest speaker at that particular function. People well, don't, as was yourself. People don't realise how big Tony Modra was. So for all of the, the young people that listen to this, go back and watch some highlights of Modra. You know, you, you're talking about Gary Ablett's senior like ability. He yep. was an unbelievable. He was un, he was Jason Dunster like on the lead with the hands, but could jump, but could jump like Gary Ablett senior. Correct. He had both of those unbelievable attributes, and had a period in Adelaide. Well, he was nickname was Godra. Um, he, he was a bit like the Beatles, he, wasn't he? Oh, he was huge. Biggest biggest thing in Adelaide since Sir Donald Bradman. Yep. 
and maybe and well because of uh, media and everything else at the time probably uh, bigger could not go anywhere or do anything and he he spoke incredibly well at that he function did speak well. and I thought uh, that whole day went over really well but all in all Hang our on. experience over there was <clears throat> a well, good one well let's not skip over the crucial parts that we've got to bring up what? Now, there were four jumpers sold at the Good Bloke Society function. How's this crucial part? Robert Dippier Domenico, Dane Swan, Tony Modra and Wayne Carey. Now, what do you reckon the jumpers were sold for? I've got no idea because it all, it's all to do with the GPS. Yes, and it all goes to charity. I don't know. So Dippers sold for 1100 Dane Swan's sold for 1500 Tony Modra's sold for 950 and the great Wayne Carey sold for $2,000. Is that it? Is that it? What if I well, by comparison, well, what did you, you what, expect? They got a very good deal there, if that's all they got that for. <laughs> Seriously. Well, what, what's, what, Dave, I was very surprised that Modras only went for nine fifty. Mate, it depends on the, depends on the crowd. You're well, with. they should have waited the next day where you went to the High Flyer Society. So you do agree, though, it was, it, they've done a great job, Adelaide, yes? Uh, sensational. A massive tick of approval, and I concur with what you said. They should actually hold it and get a deal done with Andrew Dillon and the AFL and the State Government of South Australia for the, at least the next 10 years. What about the other thing that's that happens every year as well, and that's the media start to turn on themselves? Yeah. Well, what about – should we – yes, we'll go with this, and then I'll come back to the crucial point that we've got to bring up. So you've, you've – big look, the media. Das has had a crack at Cornsy. Cornsy, I'll tell you what – like I said, in that fight the other night, he kept coming forward. Yep. Got to have a good defence if you play like Corns. And, and you know what? And he does. Very well he researched. handled himself really, really well. So Luke Darcy having a go at him about having a go at... And that's, to me, and I love Darcy as well, to me that's more of a, a Channel 7 man, Luke Darcy, sticking, Except- up, sticking up for his colleagues. But he did say would it on you, Triple M. Would you concur with that? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I Look, I think Darcy may have been jumping on the bandwagon that you created and Richo started. And said well, I that didn't create any bandwagon. That was, once again, being mis. No, so, it, so this, was, this was all based on the Sunday footy show, specifically Kane Corns having a crack at Cochin and Selwood yeah, on Talking Footy. And then Richo went on Twitter slash X and said... The bar has been dropped too low. He shouldn't have gone down that road. And then you came out last week and said something similar that they shouldn't no, be trolled. I didn't. I, yeah, trolled. Yeah, trolled. The dingbats that are throwing. Now, but I'm not talk, I'm talking about just in general. Yeah. Luke Hodge cops it on social media. They all cop it. BT's been copying it forever. But I just think guys that are just starting out in their media careers should be given a little bit of leeway to learn the caper. Yeah. Guys that have been in for a long time, open slather. You know, if you don't like what they do, have a crack. Yep. But guys finding their way, that's what I was having a crack at. And not not what Kane Corns said. Yeah, well, and I thought Kane Corns' retort to Luke Darcy was sensational. Yeah, well, that's... He left him speechless. So this is what I'm saying. So we're starting to turn on one another. Then, you know, Caroline Wilson, Caro... Well, she was on um, the ABC's Offsiders yesterday morning with Laura Kane and Koshy. Her and Koshy. Koshy's Kelly. had a crack. Koshy has had Koshy's, a crack. But Koshy's not... He's not involved in the media anymore, is he? Well, he's still a media personality. And yes, he is the Port Adelaide chairman. But I thought his um, two-fingered gesture towards Caroline Wilson I was, I didn't was out of line. Well, I've, we've got a couple of screenshots. So we might go to the Wayne Carey, the Truth Hurts Instagram and show that for everybody. Are going to put that up, are you? Well, we're not if turning a, into a gossip. No, but, it, but if it's... If it's not, what, what's Wayne, your old thing called? What is it? She and Ink? Yeah. Well, the other thing is, Wayne, that... If it was put in the Herald Sun that we would be talking about, or the Age, or the Sydney Morning Herald, or the Daily Telegraph, or whatever, it is an issue that has to be brought up. Now, Richard Collis, the former chairman of the Sydney Swans, did that to Eddie Maguire, and it has now been part of his. Um, I don't. It's part of folklore, and he was challenged about it. So why should Koshy turn around to a respected media figure and throw his fingers up? Well, I think you get a fine for that if you're a player. Correct. And you did that because kids are watching. So I guess, is that watch this space, is it? Well, I think it is watch this space. Well, what do you think about it? I mean, I'm not sure that you would do it on well, a footy player, classified. Well, a, or well, a player's not allowed to do it on the football field. 
to someone as he's walking off. I think, remember Richo did it many years he ago. He did, and yeah, few, he was quite cheeky. Yeah, so... Nathan Brown did it. I would assume live TV, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. Which well, well, Kelly Underwood, she's the host, or was the host of Offsiders yesterday, and she actually went to grab Koshias to say, hey, 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 you know, as in, you can't do that. And I don't think he should have, so it'd be interesting to see, because Laura Kane was the fourth person on the guest on the program, Maybe it is a watch this space. I think Koshy was fired up. He's sticking up for the Finlayson. Well, pardon uh, the pun. Si- <laughs> sticking up. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Um, for the Finlayson situation. Yeah, Jeremy Finlayson, the yep. Port Adelaide forward. Now, he has said something derogatory of a homophobic nature to an Essendon player. Mm-hmm. Now, are you aware of what he was alleged to have said? No idea. Well, well I assume homophobic. I do have some idea, yeah. but I don't. Actually, no, well, no, the, what it the was specifics. Said. Well, apparently, it was captured on a microphone, which is interesting in itself. Okay, so what? So what? What, what, what are you expecting? What sort of find? Yeah, let's go back then. Let's yeah. Tex Walker, who doesn't Tex Walker. Yeah. Tex Walker a couple of years ago says something on the football ground at, a, at a reserves game. Was it not? Uh, Yes, it wasn't a senior. No, it was game. a reserve game, and it, and I, he was he was actually a fan watching, and it wasn't directed like. At the person, I don't think the person actually heard what was said, but was reported. He said someone heard what he Correct. said and then reported him for saying it. He got six weeks. I think it was a trainer. Yes. Yeah, six weeks, yep. which I think was probably over the top. And earlier this year, you had Clarko get yes, what 20 grand fine. Coach of North Melbourne when Jai Simpkin was concussed by uh, Jimmy Webster and then he and Dougal Howard... Um, were not remonstrating. They were they were they were within his shot of Clarko, and Clarko's yelled out something offensive. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Just like we've already seen, where we, there's going to be inconsistencies around this, and you know who knows who knows where it lands. Like I said to the other week, toss a coin. So, what do you think Finlayson should get? He's no, come I, out and apologised. No I don't know exactly what he said, and I don't know how it was put. I think context is massive in anything that is said. Yep. And I think Koshy's argument was heat of the moment. You're in, you know, you're on the footy field. Not that that matters. Not condoning that at all. In saying that, he he seemed to have an opinion that it, it's different when you are in the heat of the battle, and when you're not. That was his argument, from what I heard. Yeah. But once again, context is an amazing thing. Uh, let's see where this lands. But like I said, toss a coin because that's generally what with the AFL you don't know where. Anything's going to land at any given time. Well, which leads to the goal review system. Yeah, putrid. Oh, umpiring at the moment, putrid. The commentators can't say this. Absolutely pathetic, I think. Boundary field. We, we did discuss this a few weeks ago. The boundary umpires seriously need goggles. And the, the field umpires holding the ball decision, I just, you know, some get, some get pinged. Um, you know, with plenty of prior, and then others have no prior and get pinged straight away. The inconsistency is just right off at the moment. And then the goal review system again on the weekend. I will say this there are reasons for, I think, that clearly being in Adelaide, gather round, you have ovals that they don't have the technology or, or set up yep. for the system like you would on the main ovals that they play on every weekend. But given that we play a professional sport, with hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars being pumped into this game, and we can't get that right. Where games are games are won and lost off the back of this. Livelihoods yep. are, are lost and made off the back of this. People get sacked off losses and, and you know, rehired on wins, and yet we can't get that right. And there's, you know... That, that's another frustration that we talk about about our game and we talk about how compromised it is. Just another compromise. It, it is ridiculous. And it's a plot on the game. Look, we saw yesterday the GWS playing when Stephen Coniglio kicked that goal and they waited some... It would have been four to five minutes to review the goal. They've taken away that gut instinct of whether it's right or wrong. Now, we don't want teams to lose games and you know, miss grand finals because of something that should have been reviewed... But the system is shot. It's actually shit. It is. And Jared Healy, the, the uh, Fox Sports commentator, said yesterday during the GWS game, and I quote, he said, reviewers have to be reviewed. Laura Kane has to get her head around it because it's just a mess. 
Now, there's strong comments from a bloke who yeah. won a Brownlow medal like and has Jared. seen more games than, you know, anybody. I like Jared, and he calls a spade a shovel. He does. And but I, it is a mess. He, he should be working more for Fox as well. And, and Adam Kingsley was um, throwing his hands in the air and shaking his head, saying, what are we doing? These, it, it's affecting, as you said, livelihoods. These players are almost warming down, waiting for a decision. It is over the top, and it is a bad blight on the game. Talk about livelihoods and talk about where certain teams are at. And I'm only watching highlights over the last four weeks. I've seen snippets here, snippets there, but then at the end of the day you see um, you see the result and obviously spoken to a number of people about North Melbourne and West Coast. Wow, how, how long? I mean, North Melbourne and West Coast at the moment, I would argue, have gone backwards from last year. I think North Melbourne during that period where Clarko had a break yep. and Brett Ratton was coach and they arguably should have won two games. I think there was a mistake of the bench against Sydney. Were they had 19 players on the field? Yeah. Yep. Where they At lost Marvel. and they got, the, they got the free kick. Could yep. have easily... I think um, it was Larky, wasn't it? Yeah, pinched that game. I don't know who it was. And then there was another game where they could have easily won Yep. in that time. That form there is where you thought, wow, you know, all of a sudden you see some... Light at the end of the tunnel. And yes, I know Sheasel and Wardlaw, and we know Larky was an All Australian last year, and we, you know, we know they've got some um, good young talent at the footy club. Yep. But are they even going to be at the peaks of their powers when this club actually get? Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure. They've made so many errors. You with, mean on field? With their recruiting. With the, yeah. So who's, so to, who's yes, to blame for that? Yes, they've got it right, in my opinion. The, t- the last two drafts, which is why we're looking at those players and yep. saying yes. But the ones before that, the mistakes that they've made haven't been with the young kids necessarily. It has been all of the players that they've got from other clubs who have fundamentally not worked for them. Would you be willing now to some have names? Now, some have got excuses. Some have been injured. Yep. But some have just been plain wrong. Some have not been anywhere near up to the standard and getting paid the sort of money that they're getting paid. Yep. Is ludicrous and West Coast. Well, they're no, they're no better. I mean, they're hard to watch. How do you go from winning a, a flag and then the space of five years be where they're at right yeah. now? It, it's it's a worry for the competition because we thought that those clubs this year, certainly North Melbourne, would be would be pushing a little bit harder. Yeah, um, and maybe getting that four, five, six wins. Well, that doesn't look like the case. Um, especially and, after the weekend. Yeah, exactly. And I concur with everything you've just said. The other part being is that they've recruited Alistair Clarkson, who is a four-time premiership coach and arguably one of the greatest of all time. Has he been able to achieve what he thought and forecast in this short amount of time? Well, no, not yet, clearly. Not even close. But it, it's, it also highlights the fact that just goes to show you that coaches don't make players, players make coaches. And if you don't have the cattle... Although the flip side could be, what about Damien Hardwick at the Gold Coast? Yeah, where, where, what are they sitting for the year? Uh, what are they, two and two? Okay. So they're pretty much... Well, no, I, they, I could be, stand to be corrected, but though I thought they were um, reasonable yesterday. Yeah, well, I didn't see any of the game. Well, they were, they were neck and neck with the Giants until three-quarter time, and then the Giants kicked away, and you know your mate Toby Green kicked five goals in a... Fantastic performance, but the Suns have. I think they made seven changes. And the, did you see uh, Mac Andrew? I think he's um, Sudanese. Was fantastic down back. Yep. He could actually be the face of the footy club in the next two to three years. I mean, I know they've got Took Miller and uh, Noah Anderson and Lacocious and Rao, but this kid has got spunk. He threw Toby Green on the ground. You know, there, there may be some conjecture over that, whether he was actually, whether Green actually forcefully threw him to the ground and had a head knock because he got up and then threw Green as a reaction. But this kid, I reckon, has got pizzazz style. He's got a good kick on him. So given what, let's talk about, let's talk about that because you, you're living up on the Gold Coast, the weather's salubrious, you know, just magnificent every day, day in, day out. Hardwick, three-time premiership coach, goes up there, says that he's got the list. Yep. And all of a sudden now they're they're where we probably thought they were at. If they don't play finals this this year, yeah. then is that a fail for Hardwick? 
I would have thought. So. I think I think it is. Yeah, but they, they given have... given what he said at the start of the year, given what he said at the start of the year, given that he left Richmond to go there and take on that list well, half, over Richmond halfway through the year, correct? That's that's a fail, isn't it? Yeah, I would have thought so. So a lot to be uh, proven yet. Do you like their list? The Gold Coast. Um, yeah, that's okay. Now, we, there's two things that we've overlooked here. One, how are you watching football if you're on a four week break? Yeah, well, you know how. I'm, well, I'm not watching it for starters, but it, it's. A lot of the places I was at on the weekend, it's on in the background. I'm certainly not sitting there looking at it, but, you know, even yesterday I was at family um, and it was on in the background, but I didn't sit there, you know, uh, and, and, the and watch, watch the TV, but you, you, you glance at it. Yep. Um, and to be honest, there hasn't been too many great games. Like I glanced uh, yesterday. Oh, Hawthorne and Collingwood was good in the, towards well, the end of the game. Well, I glanced over... And saw the half-time score of the St Kilda uh, game. St Kilda-Richmond. And uh, saw that uh, St Kilda had kicked one goal yeah. and then looked at the result today. And, you know, obviously St Kilda dominated the second half. But there's not a lot There's there's not a lot of great football being played at the moment, I don't think. What about Freo Carlton? Um, the dissemination? All of the that dissent? I heard, what I heard from that game is that that was... Uh, well, it's hard to identify the players. Well, the result, the result came... I did hear that complain as well. The fact that you know, well, Freo free man to look like Carlton yeah. was wearing Freo, and you know, and that it was decided on an umpiring error, yes. and then also a dissent decision, which which they've thrown out the door as they normally do, and then at a costly moment they bring it back out, and that is what we're talking about here with the umpires, and that's why people get so frustrated. And if I was Fremantle given that that's a dissent call, and then the AFL coming out going, oh, yes, we totally agree, as they normally do when, you know, they're sticking up for the umpire. You could show a million dissent yep. players showing dissent during the year, yeah, yep. already this year, yep. and it hasn't been paid. Yep. And at a crucial stage, they decide to pay it. You know, that, you, know that's, you know what that is? That is an umpire not having a feel for the game. Yes. Now, that's also... What that is. After I think it was round one, you said that um, after the Carlton Richmond game that the umpires were barracking for Carlton. Barracking, not barracking. Um, what was the term it you was, used? Uh, so you, you have been a media person before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, make up the narrative as you want. I was thinking of the descriptive term. What I said you used. It, I said it seems like Carlton are going for. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the umpires are going for Carlton as well. Yes, sorry, that's there right, was, yes. There were a few free kicks. What I was reminded of, there were a lot of free kicks that went uh, Lynch's way early in, that, early in that game as well. So, look, at, right at this point in time, it seems that Carlton are getting a good run with yes. the umpires at crucial times. They certainly are. And, yeah, yeah what, make, yeah. Your own, uh, make your own mind up about whether that is, a, is something that needs uh, addressing or not. Well, there were some interesting decisions over the weekend. What about um, Isaac Heaney, the uh, the Swans champ, went for a marking contest and was whacked in the uh, jaw by a West Coast player, and that's allowed to play on. So the discrepancies from the match review panel are, I think, a lot of the times dependent on whether the media picks them up. Totally concur, yeah, Tony. It's not good enough. Everyone saying you know, Isaac Heaney may be the best, one of the best players or the best player in the competition at the moment. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I think he'd be in the top three, Duck. Very good player. I'll tell you what he's got to do. He's got to string a whole year together. Yeah. He's done this before where he's had patches and he's in a very good patch. He's had a great start to the year. Yeah, he's kicking goals. He's got to follow that. If he follows that through, then then we're saying, you know. Yep. That's, and... and that's all he's looked for, I think, in his whole career. We know the talent that he's got, but it's, it's I guess, uh, producing that best more consistently than what he has over a whole year. Yeah, I totally agree. It's and a the marathon, other not, what, what, a, not what, a sprint. Yes. Now, we spoke off camera. The person that I think we both agree on who has had a fantastic start to the year and at least against Geelong the other night proved how valuable he is, is Marcus Bontempelli. Oh, well, you've known... There's, Sandra yeah, Sully with the late news. No, but I, but I am saying that I still think he is more valuable to his team than Isaac Heaney is to his. I, like what he did against Geelong the other night, and I know they didn't come away with the win, but I thought he was sensational. 
Well, yeah. he's, he's been sensational for probably about seven years, six, seven years. Yeah, I know, but he's still been able to prove it. I think he's, what is he, uh, about 30 or 31? He's about 21, isn't he? <laughs> No, he's no, still very young. For and the, a guy the, that's the goal that, I, and I know you spoke um, earlier about Libba and the grunt work that he did. He was magnificent in and under, but also the toughness with which Bont and Pally played. And then I think in the last quarter, going left of screen at the Adelaide Oval on Saturday night against Geelong to kick that goal from fifty-five on the run was just unbelievable. I know this isn't making uh, good good conversation, but I didn't see any of that, Tony, and it wasn't controversial enough for me to have a look at. Yeah, so okay. Well, well, now that it's you're just allowed... about him uh, kicking a goal, which is great. Yeah, but in context, Wayne, it was sensational. Now, the other thing is, with you obviously aren't doing at the moment, apparently you weren't drinking until you got to Adelaide. <laughs> uh, someone did sneak me uh, one, and I had, so I had, once I'd had that sip, I had a couple. Really? Yeah. So, so the abstinence broken. is broken? No, well, I'm back on it. You're back on the piss? No, back off it. Oh, so your abstinence so is... So someone, uh, well, I didn't realise there was something in it. Alcoholic? So, yes. And then, so once I'd had half of that, I thought, okay, so I had a few. So I broke it, but I'm now back off it. So was this a sort of a one-time thing for three days? Like, Yeah. Yep. Correct. And uh, how did for you three think? days? I just well, go for three days. You, you arrived in Adelaide Wednesday morning, and you left Friday night, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday. Yeah. Well, who said I drank Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? <laughs> snowy, <laughs> snowy off snowy the tree. Off the tree. I'll tell you what, uh, Snowy knows a lot. <laughs> well, did you enjoy it? How did you feel? I mean, you went uh, six I, weeks without a beer. Um, I felt disappointed. Really? Yeah. Because. Because I'd I'd gone that far, so five and whatever it was, five and a half weeks, and then uh, and then it was broken. So so I'm back. Yeah. Off it. Training. And yeah, well that, that that hasn't stopped, but I'm back off it, and now I'll I'll keep staying off it. Until, We're all all the fans out there from the truth, which hurts. is why I didn't have a set time on the end of it. Yep. Right, and I think that's where people can sometimes go wrong, and it might be you might be on a diet. You know, learn to say no at the dinner table, Tony, every now and then. Oh, here we go. But if you're on a diet and then people get disappointed in themselves because they, you know, they... Well, eat something. And well, they see a Snickers and they, they dive into that or they eat something they shouldn't. Yep. And you're allowed to have... A couple of cheat days. Well, you are. And then, then that's not... So for me, it was... I had was a little bit disappointed. Not that it was necessarily my fault. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, but someone gave me a, a soda water that had something more than soda water in it, and that's why once I got halfway through that, I thought, oh, well, okay. So I had a couple, and it was broken. Did it come? So the now I'm back on. Come no, the nerves? No, like I said, I felt – I actually felt a little bit disappointed that it was broken. So you drank so now Thursday I'm going, night and Friday <laughs> lunch. Correct. I thought, <laughs> oh, boy, if you're going to do it, it's a bit like if you're going to break your diet – don't go and have a drumstick from Kentucky. Have uh, a bucket, or yeah. if you should have yeah. a, you're gonna have. You don't just break off a little bit of chocolate. Have the whole block. Yeah, or if you're if gonna it's broken, if you're gonna have one vodka and soda, have twenty beers afterwards. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Or oh, by the way, drink responsibly. But yes, that's my theory anyway. That's yeah, okay. Now, now, what about? We have spoken about a lot of good topics today, but also one I wanted to bring up with you. Now, I'm hearing some shocking information out of Thailand. My understanding is that Dustin Martin is threatening to walk away. Wants to finish on a high. He's played 292 games. He played a good game yesterday at Norwood against uh, St Kilda. He was the number one possession getter on the ground till half time with 20 possessions. Weren't great possessions. He's not the Dusty that we used to know, the best player in the competition, Brownlows, Norm Smiths, all that sort of stuff. But... My understanding is that Richmond is in a tug of war about keeping Dusty in a Richmond jumper until he can make 300 gains. As I said, he's played 292 as of yesterday. He's told friends and family that he can't do it anymore. He wants to walk away. He's fed up. Can't deal with it. But Richmond, as I said, is grappling with the fact that he could walk away. And they're saying, you will regret this for the rest of your life. If you don't play 300 games, just get to 300 and then we'll work out then what you want to do for the length of your contract and all the rest of this year. Not sure the 300 would, he would give a 
rats ring around. Well, he doesn't, but everybody else does. Yeah, look, so he's human, Dusty. Yeah, yeah he is human. He has been an unbelievably good player. If he was to Superstar. side, by the way, I, I, this is news to me. I haven't heard any of that. But if he was to finish up at the end of the year, or, or you know, go away and and or go to another club or whatever it may be, then he has he has the right to do that. I think he's done enough in this game for us to. The thing that people don't understand about. Dustin Martin and very few players like him in the competition and probably Lance Franklin um, would be the only one in modern times that can go, just well, can't go anywhere in Australia without being recognised. Yeah. And Dusty, I think, sits in that category. Even in Sydney. I mean, a Marcus Bontempelli could go to Queensland and not be recognised. Yeah. I don't well, think Dusty Martin could. Oh, buddy, you're right. So there's, there is a big difference. And this guy is, is a bit like Buddy. They're quite... Shy, Buddy probably didn't start out shy, but yeah. in the end, because of the, I guess the the, the, the star fortune. power that that uh, came along with being the best player in the comp for a long period of time. Very, it's very hard for people to understand what it's like to live like that. And yeah. and I, and well, I you assume, would understand. And I assume Dusty, um, you know, he I think he would find it hard to trust people and. You know, you've got all these when, – when you're in that position, you've got all these people hanging off you and want, want you this and that. And, you know, he, he would uh, – and obviously with the passing of his, his dad and, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's still, um, you know, finding it difficult when you lose your best friend and not only your father but your best – so, you know, I, I – the fact that he's even out there and producing, as you said, what he did on the weekend is quite remarkable and um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if this was his last year or – or you know, gets to three hundred as you said. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure. I, I you don't. You're not in the sort of condition that Dusty's in, and still playing the type of footy that he's playing. And yes, it's he's he's not grabbing games uh, by the scruff of the neck like he used to, and, and winning games. Uh, but he's still he's still an unbelievably good player. And yep. as a lot of people said, was unlucky he made the squad. Although. I don't rate the squad, all Australian squad that is. But if he, uh, you know, some people saying unlucky not to have made the all Australian team last year. So we're not talking about someone that has, has you know, completely lost his football ability. Oh no, he's not going to be the player he was a few years ago. Will he? Will he get there at times? Yes, he will. Will it be as consistent as what it was when he won the Brownlow and the Norm Smiths? No. Well, by the way, you have got to get into the finals to make yeah to win Norm Smiths. I'm not sure Richmond are going to do that. So. Um, yeah, I, and and the more we talk about him, you know, the I, the more I, I probably that he, he he goes back into that um, that place where you know he just he, he just wants to be left alone. And yeah, he's uh, like I said, there's very few players in the league that uh, you know are like that. I, I still think, based on your um, sound advice and counsel, I still think he should get to three hundred, which then he's already in the three hundred club. I know that, but to have that against your name, it looks far better having really? 300 than 292. No, I don't think people give a crap about whether oh. you have 300 next year. Yeah, I do. Cert- no, certain. They were, I tell you what, there are certain players out there that that means a lot to, that will crawl to it if they have to. Yep. Right? And sometimes get, get given games to get there. Yeah. Dusty's not one of those. He doesn't need 300 to, to hang his hat on in what he's done. To the game, yeah, in the game. No, I agree, but I still, I think, from a um, fan point of view, I think it would be great to have you know Dustin Martin three hundred games, and then which then could trigger the question: if you have a um, mid-season draft or trade period, he could then turn around and say, "Well, you know what? I actually want to go and play for the Swans or GWS or the Gold Coast Suns or the Lions. Let me out of my contract." So he's obviously done enough at the Tigers. He's brought them fame and fortune and a huge fan base, and he's been the biggest name in the game, he and Buddy, for the last 15, 20 years. So yeah. do you then – is it worthwhile bringing in a mid-season trade period to then allow players like Dusty to turn and say, well, I want to go and live in the sunshine. I'm sick of being in Victoria. I'm not sure the mid-season trade period works for our game. And like, there's only run we, reason why – they're not paid. Dusty's the example that he could, but how many players? If you, all of a sudden you're trading and you and you've got a young family and you've got to move them over there and you're only on, 
you know, a what, certain amount of money. 220. Or whatever it is, you're only on it for a short period of time. Yeah. You, you, you can't do that. We, we don't have the sort of money. We're not America. Yeah. The NBA or the NFL? No. So yeah. everyone keeps talking, do this, do that. We can't copy that, that system purely because the finances in the game and, the and what players living. get paid and the cost yeah. of living. Yeah, it, it just doesn't marry up. Yeah. What, what do you, like you spent enough time in Sydney. Somebody from the Swans said to me, speaking of cost of living, the Swans players have how many out of the 40 do you reckon own their own home? No idea. Seven players. Well, yeah. that, they talk about cost of living. The cost of living is bad enough everywhere in Australia, now, let alone Sydney, which is probably at least another 33% on top of that. That's a, that's a stark stat to well, me. Why don't you chat to Eddie about the cost of living allowance? Well, I just think he wanted equilibrium. And then Andrew Ireland is, um, d- didn't like that comment at Melbourne's all. I don't think Melbourne's too much different, is it? Oh, of course cost it of living. is. It's really? faster. Cost well, of living? Yes. Well, you know that. You spend enough time in Sydney. A lunch you could go to in Melbourne in South Yarra might cost you 300 A lunch for you in Sydney might cost you double that. Where are you eating, Tony? Well, <laughs> usually with you. <laughs> uh, no, very good. Well, big footy chat today. Not a lot. Uh, not a lot. Well, we spoke given, about the weather. Yeah. No, well, given that we were over in Adelaide for Gather Round, yeah. and I think it deserved, once again, give that a big tick. Uh, Huge tick. Adelaide forever. Yeah, Peter Malinowskis and Andrew Dillon, congratulations. That was massive, Duck. Yep. All right. Hey, by the way, last week we spoke about BT being one of the best commentators in the country, which we both agree with. Yep. Had a lot of feedback about that too. Yeah, good. Well, it went viral, you know, news.com and the Herald Sun and all these other big websites. Now, next week, why don't you and I put together our list of commentators? Okay, well, you do yours and I'll do mine and we'll... We'll compare the two. Yes, with a you've lot already, of research. You've upset enough people in this industry. I want to see you upset a few more. Well, I could be the second coming of Kane Corns. Well, well, but get off, get off your seat and with the picket, you know, because you. I, I you know what? Want, we, I, I want you to come out of your shell a bit. Yeah, I have criticised those that deserve it, and I have pumped up those that deserve it. I've never been a shy wallflower, have I? No, I wouldn't call you shy. Well, there you go. Well, you want me to be a little anyway, bit more forceful? Anyway, I'm just looking out the, the window there and it's uh, the sun's out. So you you teetle off with your, with your umbrella, Penguin, yeah. and uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, see you next week in your Nike T-shirt. <laughs>